Hello, everyone. Welcome to APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so excited to have you with us today. Today's topic is the most magnificent thing. And it had a much longer title, but it wouldn't fit on my slide. So we're going to stick with the most magnificent thing. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to drop your name in the chat and say hello, who you are, where you're from. We are so glad to have you with us today. One more time, I'm going to say welcome to APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today's topic is the most magnificent thing. Again, we are so glad to have you join us today. It is a wonderful day where I am. I hope it's a wonderful day where you are too. Today, we have a special guest who is going to talk about the most magnificent thing, and it is Anna Anna excuse me, Anna Nowak, and she is going to take it from here. So welcome, Anna, and I will turn off and I will let you get started. Thanks, Leanne. Good morning. My name is Anna. I'm a teacher of students with visual impairments at the Foundation for Blind Children, and I am really excited to talk to you today about um, a book, The Most Magnificent Thing, and how to develop a growth mindset. So before we get started, I wanted to start with a little icebreaker. If you guys could write in the chat, what is your favorite holiday? What is your favorite holiday? We've got a lot of holidays coming up. We just had Halloween. Oh, Thanksgiving. Chandler says he loves Thanksgiving because he loves pies. I love pies too, especially pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie. Zachary said he loves Halloween. Halloween might be my favorite. I love dressing up. All right. Thank you guys for telling me your favorite holiday. So like I said, we're going to read the book, The Most Magnificent Thing. Have any of you read this book before? It's a very popular book. You might've read it in school. If you could write in the chat a, a Y for yes or an N for no, let me know if you've read this awesome book before. Chandler hasn't read it. Tiffany hasn't read it, okay. Oh good, so I'm getting a lot of no's. Great, well it's a really fun book. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. All right, um, Leanne, could you change the slide please? All right, so good morning engineers. I have a picture here of two engineers. It's a man and a woman. They have hard hats on to protect their heads while they're on the job site. The man is holding a toolbox with all the things he needs to build and the woman is holding a blueprint. Does anybody know what a blueprint is? Engineers use blueprints a lot. Zach says paper. Yes, that's a really good, good guess. Yes, we do use paper for blueprints. A blueprint is a drawing or a plan to build something. Oh, Cami, thank you. Christmas is a good holiday. I love Christmas. <laughs> All right. Leanne, can you switch the slide, please? Okay, so we are going to try our hand today at being engineers. So I have a challenge for you. A challenge is a difficult task, but I know you guys can do it. So I want you to pick a challenge. I have a couple ideas for you on my screen right now. You could build a bridge that a toy car can drive under. You could build a structure that will hold a heavy book off your table. And if you want to make it really hard, you can try and build something that will hold up a brailler. Brailers are pretty heavy, so that's going to be quite a challenge, but I think you can do it. Other ideas are you can build a catapult. 
or you can build a balance scale, which looks kind of like a seesaw. You might've played with them at school. So I want you guys to think about a challenge that you can do. And I'd like you to write it in the chat. When you decide, put it in the chat. So you could build a bridge that a toy car can go under. You could build a structure that will hold a heavy book or your brailler up off the table. You could build a little catapult that maybe shoots marshmallows. Or you could build a balance scale. Oh, great. Chandler is going to build a bridge with blocks. Very fun. Oh, Zach is going to build a catapult. Very cool. I'm excited for you, little engineers. Okay. Let's see. And Leanne, can you change this slide, please? All right, friends. So I'm going to give you five minutes to start building. Hopefully you have some materials with you. I'm going to show you what I have. I've got a big box of things to tinker with, all types of stuff. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have string. I have scissors. I have some masking tape. Oh, Nadia's gonna build a balance scale. Very cool. I have a spoon. I have some finder clips, a stapler, lots and lots of rubber bands, pipe cleaners, and some construction paper. So friends, hopefully you have some materials with you. If you do, can you write in the chat what you have to build, to build with? Oh, and marshmallows, almost forgot the best part. What materials do you have to build with? Chandler has Legos, Zach has Legos. Great, I love building with Legos. You can make so many things with Legos. Okay, friends, now that you have your materials, I'm gonna give you five minutes. Oh, Joy has wooden blocks, excellent. Okay, I'm gonna give you five minutes. Uh, Miss Leanne, if you could hit play on the timer, please. And Nadia has blocks and paper, very cool. So I am going to build with you. I am gonna pull out my tinkering table and build with you friends. I think, hmm, I don't know what challenge I should do. Let me think. I think I'm going to make a structure that holds up my brailler. So I'll be over here building and you let me know if you have any questions and then we'll talk in five minutes, okay? I'm gonna get out my tinkering table. All right, my box of things to build with. So first, I think I'm going to make my blueprint. It's gonna be my plan for what I'm building. I'm gonna get my marker and a pen or my brailler and my braille paper. So I'm gonna build something that holds my struck or my brailler up. Hmm. Let me imagine what I'm gonna do. You know what? I think this up a little bit. I think I'm going to make a lot of cylinders out of construction paper. I'm going to roll them up and then tape them and put them underneath my brailler and see if it holds it up. So I'm going to draw what I'm going to make. So I'm drawing my brailler right now. I'm drawing the carriage, all the keys, and then I'm going to draw my cylinders of paper underneath my brailler. I think I'm gonna need a lot of cylinders because the brailler is pretty heavy. So here's my picture of my brailler on top of all my cylinders. 
Now, what materials do I need to build this structure? Hmm, I'm going to need construction paper. Tape. In my brailler, of course. Probably some scissors. All right, so I'm gonna get my materials together. Construction paper, tape, and my scissors. So I'm gonna start my first cylinder. You know what, I think I'm gonna fold it lengthwise to make it a little bit stronger, like that. Roll it up. Tape it. Tape. All right, I have one cylinder done, yay! Gonna make another one. This one's gonna be red. Hold it lengthwise. Roll it up. And I'm gonna take that. And some tape on my cylinder. Here we go. Now I have two cylinders. Hmm, I wonder if that's gonna be enough to hold my brailler. I'm gonna test it out. Get my materials out of the way. Okay, I've got two cylinders, one and two. Here's my brailler. I'm gonna put it on top. Oh my gosh, I'm surprised that stayed. <laughs> oh, oh no! The brailler fell down. It squished my cylinders. <sighs> well, I'll try again. How are you doing, friends, with your structures? Can you write in the chat? How is your bridge? How is your scale coming along? <laughs> okay, oh, Jenna, you wanna keep watching me? Okay, great. Well, I made two cylinders, didn't hold up my brailler. So, hmm, I can either improve by thinking about what went wrong and trying to come up with a new idea, or I can come up with an entirely new plan. But I think I can improve on my design. So I'm gonna add some more cylinders. Gonna make a yellow cylinder this time. Fold in half. Roll it up. And tape it. Zach says more tubes. I think you're right. I think I do need more tubes, huh? When something's really heavy, it needs a strong foundation to stay up. Let's do yellow. Rolling it lengthwise, rolling it up. And taping. So I have four cylinders now. Look at all my cylinders. I'm gonna get my brailler and try again. Let's see, should I put all of my cylinders really close together? Let's see if that makes it stronger. 
let's try that. I'm gonna put them all close together and put my brailler on and see what happens. Whoa, oh, it fell down again. <laughs> no, oh no, it almost fell off my table. Hmm. Let's try again. I haven't figured it out yet, but if I keep trying, I bet I will. Zach says, no, <laughs> startled me too. Chandler says, spread them out. That's a good idea, Chandler. Let's see. Maybe if I balance the weight of the brailler on each corner, it'll stay up. Let's see. So I've got one, two, three, four cylinders all set up for the corners of my brailler. I'm gonna put the brailler on top. Oh, I did it! Yay! It stayed up! You were right, Zach! Good job! <laughs> wow, that was fun! I'm gonna move my table for a second. All right, Miss Lynn, could you switch to the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, friends, that was really fun. We'll get back to it in a little bit. Before we move on to our story, I wanted to go over some vocabulary with you. Just going to make it smaller. There we go. Okay, so our first vocabulary word we're going to talk about today is a growth mindset. Have any of you heard of a growth mindset? You may have heard it at school. Your parents might have talked to you about it. Oh, Chandler's heard of it. Very cool. Zach says he hasn't heard of it yet. Well, we're gonna learn all about it today. So a growth mindset is when we believe we can learn more or become smarter if we work hard and persevere, if we keep trying. Has anyone heard of a fixed mindset? Can you answer yes or no in the chat? A fixed mindset. Joy says she hasn't heard the fixed mindset. All right. Well, fixed mindset is the opposite of a growth mindset. People with a fixed mindset believe that their intelligence or talent is simply or simply fixed traits that they can't change them. It's just set that way, which isn't true. We can work really hard and learn a lot more. Our next word is engineer. Who has heard of the word engineer? Oh, Nadia says she's heard of perseverance. Very good, yes. Growth mindset is how we persevere, we keep trying. Zach's uncle is a train engineer, very cool. And Nadia has heard of an engineer, excellent. So an engineer is a person who designs and builds products, machines, systems, or structures. And there are a lot of different types of engineers. There's a civil engineer who builds all the buildings in our town. There's a mechanical engineer like Zach's uncle who might work on a train. And there's an electronic engineer, people who work on electronics. It could be little things like power circuits, or it could be something bigger like electrical circuits in your school or at home. Oh, Candy's heard of an engineer, excellent. Our next word is structure. So a structure is something built or constructed from different materials. Just like what I was making, I constructed a structure that can hold up my brailler with all of my cylinders. And then the last word I want to talk about as magnificent. Does anybody know what the word magnificent means? 
Oh, Nadia's heard of structure. Excellent. Important. Yes, important is a synonym for magnificent. It could be spectacular, splendid, wonderful. It's all the synonym for magnificent. Okay, can we go to the next slide, please? All right, friends, so it's time to read our story. It's called The Most Magnificent Thing. It's written by Ashley Spires, and the cover shows a little girl walking down the street, and she's holding her blueprints in her hand, some rolled up paper, and she's got a, a wheelbarrow or um, a wagon behind her. It has tons of stuff in it. It looks like she's got a boot and an antenna and lots of things made out of metal. She even has a plunger in there. <laughs> And she's walking with her little dog, who's a pug. Okay. Can you start the, the slide, please? The Most Magnificent Thing, written by Ashley Spires, creatively read by Miss Jill. This book is written for all the little perfectionists of the world. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, and they relax. Thank you. So this is an audiobook from YouTube that I got, and I like it because it also has sound effects, which is really fun. So the little girl is or playing on her scooter with her pug, and her pug is her best friend in the whole wide world. Thank you. She makes things. He unmakes things. <laughs> so she built a structure out of rolled up paper, just kind of like I did, but hers were a lot thinner. She made it looks almost like a tree house and it's almost as tall as her, but then her pug, her dog knocked it all down. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look and she knows just how it will work. Ashley by Ashley. Thank you. So the little girl knows what she wants to build, so she drew out her blueprint. She's laying on the ground with her dog and she's drawing on her paper what she wants to make. And then she puts it up on her easel to, to inspect it and look it over. Look at all the steps and all the materials she's going to need to build her magnificent thing. It's just how it will work. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time, so easy peasy. First things first, she hires an assistant. So she's sitting at a table and she's pretending to read a resume that her pug gave her, like a job interview. I think she's gonna hire her pug as an assistant. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way to work. <laughs> so she took all of her materials and her wagon and went outside. And it looks like she lives in a city, maybe in New York City. And she's not out of the way at all. She's actually on the sidewalk and has her things everywhere. And all of her neighbors are walking around it and they look a little grumpy that she's made such a mess on the sidewalk. The girl tinkers, hammers, and measures, while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she's finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side, and her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. 
It's all wrong. Hmm, it's all wrong. Let's see what she does. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she's finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with its paw. Hmm, the thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. She even adds antenna. She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells a stinky cheese, but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her mind. So she has all of her inventions all over the sidewalk right now, and the people walking by are looking at her curiously, like, what is she doing? And she's starting to look pretty angry in this picture. And she gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. And she pummels little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of the not right things. Ah! If only the thing would just work, crunch. Oh. oh no, she jammed her finger. Something broke and she jammed her finger in it. It hurts really bad and now she is not happy. Pain starts in her finger, but it rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It is not her finest moment. Ah. <sighs> No good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. Mm, it's not much help at first. But before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. So she goes for a walk and there's five different pictures of her walking with her dog. And the first one, she looks really sad, like she's crying, very angry. And then as the pictures move on and she walks for a little bit longer, she starts to smile. And then she sees someone walking by with balloons and she has a big smile on her face. And then the last picture, it looks like she's at a bakery and bought herself something to eat. And she looks very, very happy now. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing that she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one and the shape of another. The wheels to seat ratio of the next, yes. They are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully, slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, and painting. Her assistant makes sure there's no distractions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is perfect thing for warding off them bears. <gasps> This will stop the leaks. I wonder if I can have it. Ew, this one's all wet. So all of the inventions that she didn't like, that she left out on the sidewalk, people are walking up and looking at them and they're finding new ways to use it that it'll be helpful for them in their life. The afternoon turns into evening. Finally, 
she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good, long look. It leans a little to the left and is a bit heavier than expected. The colors could use a bit of work, too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are <laughs> She made a little sidecar for her scooter, and her best friend, her pug, her dog, is riding in it with her. Not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. The end. If you want to be kept up to date when I post more books, go ahead and hit the Thank you. So she built her magnific magnificent thing. She built a sidecar for her scooter so that she could have fun with her best friend, with her pug. Okay, can we go to the next slide, please? So what happened in this story? Let's think about what happened at first, in the middle, and then at the end. So in the chat, can you let me know what happened at first? What did the little girl want to do? What did she start out doing? Hmm. Zach says build, yes, she wanted to build something. Chandler, yep, yeah, that's right, she wanted to build something. That's right. So first, yep, Nadia, first she built, very good, she started building. And then what happened when she started building? Did things go easily for her or did it get difficult? Yep, yeah, that's right. Very good, Nadia. She said next she planned and it was tough. Very good. It was really tough. Yep, none of her inventions were right. None of them were the magnificent thing. That's right, Zach. And Nadia, yep, she got mad. She did. She got really mad. And what did she do when she got mad? What did her best friend, what did her pug, her dog ask her to do? Yeah, that's right. Zach threw things. Oh, I'm sorry, Zach said that she threw things. That's right. And Nadia said she didn't wanna go for a walk. Mm -hmm. But what did she end up doing then? She didn't want to go for a walk, but then she did. And then what happened after she went on her walk? Did the walk help her or did it make things worse? That's right, Nadia. She felt much better after the walk. Very good. And after she felt better, after she calmed her body down, what did she do? Did she give up or did she do something different? Yes, wow, good answers. Yeah, Zach said she saw all of her other inventions. She persevered, very good. Use of the word persevere. She kept trying, even though it was tough, she kept trying. And Joyce says um, she was able to have a new perspective and appreciate the things she built. That's right, very good. And at the very end, did she build her magnificent thing or did she just give up? She just call it quits or did she end up persevering and trying again? She built it. Yes, that's right, Joy, she built it. Yep, Zach 
Yep, yeah, that's right. She built the cart. She built her magnificent thing. Very good. Good listening, everybody. Okay, next slide, please. So I have some more questions for you about the story or in life in general. <laughs> if you could make a most magnificent thing, what would you want it to do? You could build anything. What would you make it do? <laughs> Chandler says fly. Yeah, that would be really cool. I would love to build something that flies. Nadia says she would make it noisy. She, Zach's, oh wow, Zach says he would build a computer. Very cool. Those are all great answers. What does the character do when she realizes she's failed? What does she do? Nadia says she tries again. That's right, she did. She took a little break and she tried again. Looked at it from a new perspective. Very good. Yep, she tried lots and lots. Great job. Okay, what could the main character tell her brain when she gets angry and quits? Who could she tell her brain? Hmm. She was really upset. She wanted to quit. What she, could she tell her brain? <laughs> yeah, Nadia says, keep going and try again. Persevere. Very good. Zach says he could listen to her dog. That's good advice. <laughs> And Chandler says you could try again. She could try again. That's right. Okay. What did you tell yourself when you started making your structure earlier? Was it hard? Did you say, I can do it? Or did you say, oh, this is difficult. I'm having trouble with this. <laughs> Chandler said he just wouldn't have fun with it. It's a good attitude. <laughs> yeah, Zach says he's not done yet. He needs more work. Yeah, we only had a few minutes to work on it. We'll work on it more in just a little bit. Oh, good, Nadia, excellent. In the beginning, she said, I could do it. That's a great attitude, very good. Okay, has there ever been a time where you felt discouraged before? What did you do about it? Good, Nadia. Yes, you felt proud. Oh, I'm so glad you felt proud. When is a time where you felt discouraged before or something was really hard and you wanted to give up? And what did you do about it? Good, that's a great, yeah, Zach. Zach says he asked for help with writing. That's a great thing to do. When things get hard, you can ask for help. Chandler said when he couldn't learn a, a route with his cane, he kept getting lost and felt bad. Yeah, that's tough. Sometimes we do get lost when we first start using our canes. Nadia said just crocheting. She wanted to give up because it was hard. Those were all hard things. And what did you end up doing about it? Did you give up or did you keep trying? Did you ask for help with writing? Did you keep practicing with your cane so you wouldn't get lost? Did you keep crocheting? I know when my brailler fell over the first couple of times I tried my structure, I felt like it was challenging, but then I kept trying. Oh, that is a great idea. Chandler said he did better 
when he le learned his route in pieces and instead of trying to do the entire thing all at once, that is a really good thing to do, to break down something challenging into smaller parts and then just focusing on one part at a time. Great job, Chandler. Oh, good. And Zach says the school got him a computer program to help him. Very good. Zach asked for help and his school helped him so that he could overcome that challenge. Wow. Good, good job, friends. Thank you for sharing. Okay. My last question is why is our attitude important when we face challenges? Why is our attitude important? Hmm. Do you think we're more likely to overcome a challenge if we're really, really angry and we're throwing things? Or do you think we'd be better at finishing that challenge if we're calm, if we take a break, if we ask for help? Oh, good. Chandler said that his mobility teacher helped him have a better attitude because he was just frustrated. That's a good teacher. Yep, Nadia, that's right. It is important because we need to be calm and quiet. Yep. When we're calm, we can think better. We can think more clearly and we might come up with new ways to solve a problem. Yeah, it is nice to be encouraged when things are hard. Sometimes our family or our friends can encourage us. We can say, you can do it, you can do it. And that helps, that fills up our hearts, I think. And it makes us feel like we can, we can actually do it. We just have to keep trying. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, so we are gonna play a little game here. So I have some different phrases that people who have a fixed mindset might say, and some phrases that people with a growth mindset might say. So I'm going to say them, and then in the chat box, I want you to say, let's see, let's do um, yes or no. So if I say, I can't do it, is that a growth mindset? Yes or no? Can you write Y or N in the chat box? I can't do it. No, no, that's right. I see a lot of no's. Very good. If I say I can't do it yet, is that a growth mindset? Yes or no? Yes. Very good. Yep, that's right. I see lots of yeses. Sometimes if we just add the word yet to how we're feeling, it can make us feel more empowered, like we can solve the problem. So instead of saying, I can't do it, we could say, I can't do it yet. I'll just have to keep trying. Good job, guys. Let's do another one. Um, this is too hard. Is that a growth mindset? No. Very good. How about, this will never work. Is that a growth mindset? This will never work. No. Very good, guys. I see lots of no's. Okay, how about, I want to learn. I'll try another way. Is that a growth mindset? Oh, Chandler says that he says that, but has learned that it doesn't help. Sex says yes. How about, Mistakes help me grow, or I'll try another way. Is that a growth mindset? Very good. Excellent job, friends. Okay, next slide, please. So like I said earlier, one little word, the word yet, if you just tack it on to the end of a phrase, it can make you feel much more empowered, like you can solve a problem. And they have a fun little song that we're gonna play for you that talks about the word yet.
Wah, wah, wah. Oh. How does it go? This no look right. That is Sesame Street. It was all the different characters from Sesame Street. Good listening. Okay, next slide, please. So like I said, we can just add the word yet to a sentence and it'll make us feel more empowered. For example, we can say, I can't do this yet. This doesn't work yet. I don't know anything about this yet. And I can learn more. This doesn't make sense yet. What could I do? I could ask for help. I could learn a new strategy. I could look at it a different way. I'm not good at this yet, but if I keep practicing, I'll get better. Okay, next slide. So when the little girl got upset, the dog suggested she go for a walk to calm down. There are lots of ways to calm down when we get upset. Can you guys think of any ways to calm down. I have some listed here. You could go for a walk, like the little girl in our story. You could have a glass of water. You could listen to your favorite music. That's probably one of my favorite things to do is listen to one of my favorite songs when I get upset. Nadia says playing the drums. That is a good one. Playing an instrument is a great, great way to calm our bodies. Zach says reading a book. That's great. Yes, reading a book. You could hug someone you love. You could hug your pet or your family or a friend. You could squeeze a stress ball or play with a fidget toy. Chandler says music. Yeah, me too, Chandler. I love listening to music to calm down. Nadia playing the piano. Playing an instrument is just a fantastic way to help clear our minds. Very good. We could do some stretching, maybe do a little yoga could think of something happy, could read a magazine or a book, like Zach said, or you could breathe in and out slowly 10 times. Kimmy says music. Yes, music is a popular choice. Go for a walk. Yep, going for a walk is a great way to clear your mind and calm your body so you can look at things in a different way. 
Very good, friends. Okay, so when the little girl was designing her magnificent thing and when engineers design something to solve a problem, they follow a series of steps. So first, they find out what their problem is. And for the little girl, she wanted to build something magnificent. So once she knew what the problem was or what she wanted to make, she had to use her imagination to think about what she wanted to create to solve her problem. So she made a plan. So she drew out on her blueprint what she wanted to make, and then she created it. And then after she created it, she experimented with it. She tinkered with it, she played around with it, and then she looked at it and thought, hmm, did this work? Did this become a magnificent thing that I wanted it to become? Can I make it any better? Can I improve it in any way? She did that many, many times and she had all of her little inventions lined up on the sidewalk. She experimented, she improved on it, or she started a new plan. She just kept trying and trying again. She kept making improvements. And then she finally made a new plan and she made her magnificent thing. She made her awesome sidecar for her dog, for her scooter. All right, friends. So now that you know about how to use a growth mindset, let's keep building. We have a few more minutes. I'd love to see if you can solve, oh, I'll have to change that timer says 15 minutes, but we're running a little bit later, a little bit late. Oh, wheel action. Nadia says she's going to make a wheel action skateboard. Very cool. Okay, friends, so I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll regroup and I'd love to see what you guys are working on, what magnificent thing you're building. I'm gonna make another magnificent thing on my tinker table over here. I think I'm going to see if I can make a structure that will hold up a textbook in my brailler. I'm going to roll this up. I think if I make more cylinders, I could probably hold up more weights. Construction paper. I'm gonna roll up another cylinder, fold it in half. And tape it. I'm gonna make another cylinder. This time I will make it blue. One of my cylinders came undone. I'll have to use more tape. I'm gonna fix this cylinder that came undone. I'm going to add some more tape. I'm going to improve on my design by adding more tape to make it stronger. Here we go. Let's see. I think I'm going to make two more and see if it will hold up my trailer and a heavy book. Fold it in half. Roll it up. All 
All right, I had one, two, three, four, five, six cylinders. I think I'll make one more purple one. Oh no, another one of my cylinders popped open. I'm gonna have to improve on it again with more tape. All right, friends, one more minute, and then I love to hear what you guys have been building in the chat. Okay, I have lots of cylinders. I made a stronger foundation, so hopefully it can hold up more weight. Let me get my book. Let's see. I am going to spread my cylinders out just like you guys recommended. Spread the weight to see if that helps. All spread out. I'm going to put my brailler and my book on top. And let's see if it works. Hey, I did it! One of the cylinders fell over. But I made my foundation stronger. And now it's holding up a big, heavy book and my big, heavy brailler. Yay! Move my tinker table out of the way. All right, friends. How are your designs coming along? Can you write in the chat? Did you run into any problems like I did? Chandler says he had a few problems with his Legos, but they're all good. Great job, engineers. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for joining us. Muted. I'm playing that muted game again. Thank you so much, Anna. So glad to have you with us. I loved seeing how those rolled up cylinders actually held up a very heavy brailler. Didn't think it would work. And you tried <laughs> and you made it work. Awesome. If anyone is listening and wants to know what's coming next, tomorrow is communicating about visual impairment and handling those not so fun, uncomfortable situations. And then on Thursday is understanding my breath, breathing your breath. Hmm. I am so glad you were with us again, Anna, and I'm going to say goodbye and hope to see everyone tomorrow.